In this tutorial, I'm going to go over Edpuzzle. Um, if you've never used Edpuzzle, Edpuzzle is a program where you are able to use video and create different types of multiple choice or written response questions for students to answer as they watch. You can also um, crop the video, put voiceovers, add notes to it. So it makes the video watching no longer passive, but the students are now interacting with it. Uh, the students can then watch the videos individually as well and answer these things. And it gives you some formative feedback, some live analytics to see how their comprehension with the content of the video. So edpuzzle.com, you can um, go through there. You also have the ability of downloading it um, as an app so you can access it through your apps within your Google Chrome, um, whichever way you decide to go. You're going to click on log in and when you click on log in, Edpuzzle is always going to ask you first of whether you're a student or a teacher because then you'll log in with those accounts. Um, so we'll click on I'm a teacher. And they do have the single sign-in option with Google, which is what we'll use. And we do have a site access to Edpuzzle. So our whole school, all our teachers have access to Edpuzzle. And the great thing about that is that as a school site, that means that any colleague that creates an Edpuzzle video um, is available for you to view. So if one of your colleagues created an Edpuzzle video on a topic that you wanted, then you can go ahead and actually access that video and you can use it as is, or when you go ahead and access the video for you can make a copy for yourself, you can edit it and tweak it to whatever you need. So that's the nice thing about the sites, uh, the school site one is that we have access and we're able to um, share our um, information. Uh, you can also create your own content. So if I wanted to add content here, I can do so by either uploading a video so I can create my own video. So for example, this whole entire screencast that I've recorded, I can always upload this to an Edpuzzle and add questions to it if I wanted to. So I can upload my own video or I can go ahead and use videos um, through different types of channels. So right here, it has YouTube, Khan Academy, TED Talks. It also has already previously created a puzzle from all different users that I can search through. And if there's something that I want to use, I can go ahead and select it to be able to copy it or edit it. So I can copy it as is, or I can go ahead and edit the video It'll load the video and I can then be able to add questions to it. I can change out the questions, whatever it is that I want to do. And when I'm done with that, I can click on finish. So for example, if I wanted to trim this video, I can just move this marker as to where I wanted to trim it. And it would allow me to do that. Um, if I wanted to actually record over the video, so perhaps the video doesn't have any um, audio and I wanted to add my own voice over the video, then I can record that as well. And then the questions is where I can, throughout the different video parts of the video, I can stop it and I can add different types of questions for students to answer. So I can add multiple choice questions where I can type the question in. I can even include an image if I wanted to or link to something else as part of the question. And I can go ahead and type in the answer choices. I can add as many answer choices as I want. I can also provide feedback depending on the answer. So if it's the correct answer, if I wanted to type in the feedback of saying like, good job, it's right, correct, whatever it is, I can add in a little image, a little meme, whatever. And then for the incorrect answer, I can go ahead and actually then provide some feedback if they chose the wrong one and give them some explanation as to why it's not the right answer. Uh, maybe I wanna provide them with a link to some help as to where they can go to kind of relearn that content if they wanted more information as to why that's not the right answer and give them more information to kind of give them some more remediation, then I can do that as well. Once you have gone ahead and put in your answer, and I'm just typing in whatever so I can go ahead and click save. Um, It'll allow you to click on save once you filled in all of the different options and you'll go ahead and save that answer and then um, move on with the video. And then let's say if next 
over here on the video, I want to add an open-ended question, then I can go ahead and do that as well. Maybe I just want to add a quick note that I want the students to take note of. So I want to add a comment. So I can do that here as well. Um, once I have completed everything that I've wanted for my video, I just go ahead and click on finish and it's going to then put everything together. And now I'm able to assign my video to my class. So let's talk about classes. There are two different ways that you can create ed, um, classes in Edpuzzle. If you use Google Classroom, then it has a great one button import system where I just click on Google Classroom and all of my classes will show up and I can just click on all of the classes that I want to import into Edpuzzle. And so that's one way. Now, if I don't use Google Classroom, um, I can also go ahead and create my own classes by just adding a new class and creating my own class manually. Now, this is, for example, um, elementary. If you have younger students that don't have their own accounts for Edpuzzle, like they would through Google Classroom, that they have their own Google accounts, um, then I can go ahead and create my own class where I can just write my, my name. And I would then go ahead and choose an open classroom. So that means that my students don't have an account to log in. It's just a class code that they can use to join. And then they can go ahead and just type in their names and they can watch the video and answer the questions. And I can see the progress for each video that I assign and see what the, how the students did for each of the videos. And that's an open class. Um, so I can go ahead and use Edpuzzle with my elementary students. I can use Edpuzzle even if I don't have Google Classroom and they don't have accounts, it's okay. If I have an open class, then I can still record their progress and they'll just join using a code instead of using their account. Now, for content, right, when I'm assigning it, once I have my videos and I'm ready to assign, then I can go ahead and select whatever video it is that I want to assign to my class. And I can just go ahead and click on the video and down at the bottom I have the ability to either continue to edit it or if I want to assign it to my class I can select which class I want to assign it to. Um, I can then add a due date for it and make sure we click on save. I can prevent skipping. So that means that the students have to watch the video and they can't move on to the next part of the video if they don't answer the question. So make sure that's toggled on. If I want to turn on closed captioning um, and I want to be able to post it onto Google Classroom, then I can go ahead and toggle that on as well. Let me go ahead and select a class to assign it to. Toggle on the posting onto Google Classroom. And now that I have everything, I can go ahead and click on a assign. So now my assignment has been assigned and I see here my list of students, this was my test class, so there's only one student, but I will be able to see my list of students populating down here and I can see who's watched it. Um, and once they've watched it, I can see the progress that they've made. And as they answer the questions, it goes ahead and grades it. If they're multiple choice, it can be automatically graded. If it's a written response that I need to go in and actually then be able to see um, what they wrote and I can then approve whether or not they got it right and that will then go ahead and update it as I see the students and their questions. The grade book right, will then allow me to see all assignments that I've made in my class. I'll be able to see the students, what they got in that um, video, the total time they spent on that video, right, and what the video is called. So I'll be able to see that in all of the assignments that I have for that particular um, class. So I can keep track of my students' grades on their um, Edpuzzle right built in gradebook within the Edpuzzle itself. 
Now, if you remember, I went ahead and I posted it into Google Classroom. And one comment I want to make about that is this. When it posts into Google Classroom, it's just going to post as the Edpuzzle and the students will just click on the link and it'll take them directly to that. Because they're already signed into Google, that means that and import it through Google Classroom, they're already within their account. And if for some reason they can't access it, then you just need to remind them to make sure that they're signed in with their Google account and it'll give them access. But when it posts into Google Classroom, it just posts as that Edpuzzle with the title. So one thing that you're gonna have to do, and I suggest that you do do this because it will make it a lot easier um, for students as time goes by, is that you are gonna have to go in and edit this assignment and put it in the correct spot. Because right now, this Edpuzzle is just kind of lingering with no topic um, and no kind of category. So you need to make sure that we put it in the right spot. So for example, I am a person that leap, that numbers all of their assignments. So if I know that this Edpuzzle was assignment number five, I wanna go ahead and edit that to make sure it says assignment five on it. And it's part of the chapter three um, topic, then I want to make sure it's under a topic and now it's saved in the correct spot. Let me just put whatever here. And so now if I scroll down to chapter three, there is my Ed puzzle in the correct spot where it needs to belong. Does it take a little bit longer? Yes. Is it worth it a thousand times? Because if not, then you're just going to have all the Edpuzzles are just going to be kind of lingering at the top and just populating over time as you keep assigning them. And they're just kind of floating around with no purpose because they don't, but they're not in their proper spot. So unfortunately with Edpuzzle, when it posts into classroom, it's just a general post. It doesn't allow you to actually edit the way that the assignment posts into the Google Classroom. So if you want to post it into Google Classroom, you're going to have to go in and re-edit it into where it really belongs. It's a little bit of an extra step, but in the long run, it's worth it um, when it comes to posting into Google Classroom. Um, if you don't post it into Google Classroom, it's not a big deal either. If the students just go ahead and log into their Edpuzzle, they'll notice that in their class, they have that assignment to do. So either way, they'll just log in with their Google account and they'll see that in that class, in your class, they have that assignment to complete. Um, just like if you have an open class, if you've assigned it something to your open class, then they'll log in with the code and they'll see the assignment is there. They just have to click on it and go ahead and answer the question, watching the video and start answering the questions. Um, so that basically is an overview of Edpuzzle. It's pretty intuitive and easy to use. Um, it's a simple tool, but a very powerful tool. So I definitely suggest that you give Edpuzzle a try in your classrooms. So thanks for watching.